Hello and welcome to the spider's web. We're going to be doing a bit more with our collection of Dead Zone. And what we've done so far is this. Um, I'm going to. I've just done it to see what the colour scheme was like. I do quite like it, so I've done both sides exactly the same. So now we can go ahead and do it on a bigger piece of terrain. And for this, I'm going to have to raise the camera because the bigger piece of terrain is this. Now with this, because the clips were breaking, um, I didn't really want to spend out on any more of them. <coughs> Excuse me. I have decided to glue them all together and make permanent buildings. So that's what I've done. And let's translate or transfer what we've done on here onto our building. Now, bear in mind these were originally storage crates, so they don't have to be all the same colour. Um, so there may be areas of the storage crates that I want a different colour, we can do that because I set the storage crates, so storage crates wouldn't necessarily be all the same colour. Um, but uh, let's show you how I did them first, shall we, before we do anything else. Okay, so what I did was a decent sized brush, they've been sprayed using Citadel's Chaos Black Primer and now we're going to be using Citadel's The Fang okay so we just get a little bit of the, the Fang onto the brush and just sweep downwards. We're not looking for brilliant coverage um, I think this brush is actually a little bit damp because the coverage even though we're not after brilliant coverage isn't really as good as I want it to be so and dry it off a little bit and then carry on. There will be areas of this we can pick out with different colours as well so that's better. Um, so we can do that as well as you know, paint different colours but I want to do the original so I would say base coat of this a bluish colour leave a little little bit of the base of the uh, primer coming through we can we can do that because it's it's not going to be um, with it being a terrain piece um, with what it's what it should originally have been representing on the world and so we can just use it or I can just paint it badly basically is what I'm saying um, it doesn't have to be everything uh, perfect and to be honest with this kind of terrain piece it's better if it isn't it looks more realistic if it's a bit more shot at if it looks as though it's been bashed about and uh, whatever it will look all the better so I say you don't necessarily want it to look um, absolutely fantastic with the paintwork so it might seem a daunting prospect when you see these big three inch flat pieces with the uh, the designs on but when all said and done all you're doing is just going up and down with the brush at the moment you're not doing anything other than that because then we're leaving 
certain crevices um, unpainted and we can still see the black through it which is going to add to the wear and tear aspect try to disguise any brush marks we saw down the move up from the floor move up from the floors down from the um, open spaces shall we say when I say up from the floor, I mean the <coughs> you want to come away from the corners rather, not from the floor, away from the corners. Or start in the corners and move move out. Because if you if you go from the outer edge into the corner, then what's going to happen is you're going to get a build up of brush strokes there where your brush has had to stop and that is going to ruin the look of what we're trying to achieve. What we have to, what we got to remember is we want a smooth-ish, um, smooth-ish coat. We don't want to be seeing any uh, brush, um, brush marks. Um, I'll give you another idea. I'll just drop the camera a minute and I'll show you in here what I mean more clearly. Okay, so. Here we go. So if I move in there, you see where the the brush ends, you get that little ridge there. That's not what we want. What we're wanting is from the if we go up, in like that. now once we've done so much we can go backwards and forwards so we're still seeing the actual lines from the brush but we're not seeing um, where the brush where the bristles of the brush has stopped as we are doing on the edge there. And now we're going to have to do something about that now because if we don't it's going to stay like that and you're going to see it no matter what. I'm just going to give my paints a bit more of a shake. Now these buildings are not going to get a wash over them. They don't need one. I, Although I do prefer to have a wash on my models, I don't usually like to put them on models this big. Um, I would sooner have it on, like, you know, minis. So, there we go for that. Okay, so now it's time for this uh, window here. And again we're going from the inside edge up.
account. I do this in all different colours if you so wish. I'm just making this particular building with the uh, blue, well, with the fang, which is bluey grey colour. Um, it used to be shadow grey. Well, so this building will be this colour. The another building I do could be green. Another building I could I do could be orange, reddish colour. Um, so we don't necessarily have to make exactly the same colour for each one. <coughs> even even this, if I use this colour on another one, I may use a different shading technique over the top of it, or highlighting technique over the top of it. Um, So the bigger the brush you get, can get for this, um, not always the quicker you're going to be, but uh, the less fiddly you're going to make it for yourself. Because you, you want to be really loose with the brush control on these, you do not want, as you can see, you don't want much detail on it, you just, it's just like doing a, a very over glorified um, dry brush technique. So you just basically try and just slap the paint on um, as badly as you can, as quick as you can. <laughs> I know it sounds stupid that idea, but I like say you don't want you don't want it looking as though it's shot bought and do each individual panel because it's going to look wrong if you do that. It's not going to look what it is. if you get me drift. Okay, so that's all the building done in the blue. And the next thing you want is remove them to one side. We want a dirt grey, which is going to be in this case Dawnstone. And you want a light grey, which in this case is going to be administratum grey. And we're going to start off with the darker grey. And it just gets a little bit on your brush. This is going to be a dry brush, but it's not going to be a very light dry brush. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be the dry brush technique, a stronger, or a more stricter version of the dry brush technique than the previous colour, but um, it's not going to be a dry brush. You want to see the colour coming off it onto the flat parts, not just picking up around the details. And it's a case of just slapping. You want to get as little paint on your brush as you can, which allowing some to come off and go on the flat parts. So I'm, going to, I'm using a different technique altogether for the flooring because it's, it's basically going to have the light coming down from it so it's not going to be 
it's not going to have that vertical highlight to, um, look so it's going to be um, it's going to have the oh what am I going to say what am I saying it's going to have the pale grey all over it so that's why I'm doing that that way I'm also going to be doing the same here as well because again it's a horizontal part Okay, so that's that mid-range grey on there. <coughs> Next we're going to have our paler grey, which I showed you was the administratum grey. And that is going to be put on very, very spurringly. It's going to be more, much, much more closer to a dry brush than we've done previously but still it's not going to be a pure dry brush I'm just going to add a few little strokes here and there and we're just going down with this we aren't going up occasionally you might catch it like I did um, but it's not really any big deal if you do but try if you're doing this not to you want to basically pick out the details on the top edges rather than the bottom edges because this is where we're getting our highlight from I think what we can do however is we could ha add a little of the medium grey underneath there because it doesn't look right at all in my opinion. So we'll just add a touch, we're not going to add in a lot of the medium grey. Okay, so next what I did was I picked out some of the detail in the um, barricade itself 
and for that I used first of all castell and green then I added a slight highlight with Elysian green and then I added a slight extreme highlight with Nurgling green so we'll see how that looks now Okay, you can use whatever colour you want on this, this is just the colours I've decided to use. Um, I'm going to just use it in this area. I don't want it dominating the um, structure. There is something to be said about doing these things. Don't anybody ridicule you because you want to make models. The psychological advantages, but personal psychological advantages of doing stuff like this is worth anything. It is a wonderful way of winding down and de-stressing because if you make a mistake these kind of paints they are very very easy to correct in fact you don't make mistakes you just have have 
happy accidents. And then when you start you can go as detailed or as basic as you want. And nobody but nobody has the right to tell you you've done it wrong. Anybody who tries, tell them to stuff off. This is your hobby. You're doing it for your amusement. You're not doing it for anybody else. Unless of course you decide to go much further into it and make it a business and you're taking orders and um, what you call it um, oh dear what's the word I'm looking for we're taking orders for painting commissions when you take, if you're taking painting commissions for this it's a business so you have to do it to the uh, customers liking but if you're doing it for yourself then obviously you're doing it for yourself and as long as you are happy I want to make this look as easy as I can for anybody who doesn't know how to start. But the best way to start is by watching other people. Watch videos like mine, watch videos like... Um, oh, there's quite a few out there. Girl, not girl, yeah, uh, girl painting, mini girl. Um, there are lots of good video series out there that will talk you through how to get much better results than I can but I just want to get you picking the paintbrush up buying the, getting the paints, picking your paintbrush up and getting started once you've got over that hurdle there'll be no stopping you, I can guarantee you you'll be wanting to do more and more and more as I say, it's just getting, getting over the hurdle stick with it. You will be so proud of yourself and you stick with it and you finally done and you've done you've got your first model painted up and based up. And even when it comes down to basing I don't um, I don't want to show you how to do anything incredibly scenic. I'm just more interested in getting you doing it. I'm trying to encourage people into doing this kind of stuff. If I can encourage, if if one person picks up a brush after watching one of my videos, then I will see it as a worthwhile endeavour now you may have noticed that I have done the um, the green on the underside of that one in there but I haven't highlighted it I've no need to it's just going to look dark anyway so it's not for me I don't think it's going to look right if I do highlight that area but it looked wrong with not highlighting the walls and all I'm doing for this is just dabbing the paint on this is the uh, Nurgling Green by the way and all, as I say all I'm doing is just dabbing it on towards the top edge of each of the green areas Um, you can see I'm not painting it 
I'm just going to, I'm just dabbing. And there's areas here as well where I've actually gone onto the, as you can see there, onto the walls. Again, it doesn't matter. Because they weren't. So trying to make it, a, I don't know whether they'd be trying to make it a little nicer as habitats or just colour coding um, the stock. I don't know, but if they're trying, if they're if they were doing it to make the habitat areas look nicer then possibly a rush job to get it done and get it finished so they can start getting inside and keeping warm so that's the main parts done next Couple of metallic colours, iron breaker and rune fang steel. Where were these going, you ask yourselves? And these are going on the a very small amount is going on the buttresses. Where there are buttresses. On the on the supports. And I mean a very small amount, we're not going to be going overly metallic with these because I don't want it looking too much out of place. But that's it, that's all we're doing, just slapping a little on there, and we can do some of the, the cross beams. I'm going to go over these cross beams, better idea with. An old favourite of mine. Um, I'm going to do this part as well as metal. You know the little rod thing you hear. We're going to be doing that as metal. Same though. Um, can if you want to run a little bit. don't have to do this if you want, I'm just adding a little bit more, a little bit extra detail here and there, but I've noticed with these that I could get away with doing something different on the cross beams, which I'm going to do. Okay, tin bits, Old Faithful. And the cross beams here are going to be done. Tin bits and then dry brushed over. This is the only building I'm going to show you how I'm painting. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this one and that's it. I'm just going to raise the thing again. Yeah, so there's not much point really in uh, showing you how to paint all of them, but it's just going to be exactly the same routine each and every time. And these are, these are long videos. Seriously, these are long videos. Um, so, just to basically save time, I'm going to show you this one. I may do the others different colours, but the principle is exactly the same. Okay, so doing the iron breaker, and it's just I 
like we did with the others. Downward strokes. Um, I'm not sure whether you can actually see any difference there on camera or not. You might be able to now. So it's just downward strokes. This is the um, colour that used to be bolt gun metal, if I remember rightly. So we'll do that here. I'll also do it inside as well, but not to any great fuss because, as I said, you ain't going to see it. And then it's the same type of thing for here as well. There we go, and there we go. And that still looks as though it's... I can't see the... metallic parts of that. So let's see if I can... Nope, still looking the same. Okay, fair enough. I hope you can see that. And now that's done. I'm going to do a quick dry brush over now with Runefang steel. Once I've dried my brush. So as I said, I'm going to use Runefang steel now to go over it. Um, just to brighten up the exterior parts um, give you a bit of a shake and try and be a bit more careful doing this you don't want to hide all the detail in it. I will just do a little bit here and a little bit more inside on that. My friends is our first habitat area done for dead zone. So as I said, I won't be doing any more of the buildings for this, but I will be making a start in the next video on the plague. So until then, hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one, but um, yeah, I hope it's covered everything you wanted to know. So until next time, as I said, we'll start on the plague then. Take care, God bless. And bye for now.